Hey there. Welcome to the Eurostat from Milwaukee Bucks podcast, probably a part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network and GSPN, presented by Prize Picks. And well, I don't know if I can say presented. Also brought to you by GSPN Premium, a new offering we are very excited to launch today, Tuesday, May 21st. Why is it important that it's May 21st? Are you just proud that you know the date since you work from home, Ty? Maybe, but also three years to the day from when we launched the original GSPN ahead of the Bucks magical 2021 championship run. We are now launching GSPN Premium, the next step in our evolution as a world-consuming media entity. But first, of course, I am Ty, as I mentioned, here with my lovely co-host Rohan Kadi, and we're both, and all six of us at GSPN, are extremely excited to launch GSPN Premium today, aren't we, Rohan? New question today, aren't we? We really are, Ty. I mean, this is something that we've been thinking about workshopping for a long time now. We wanted to make it right. We wanted to make sure it's actually something that is good for us, good for the consumers, good for all of you guys. It's, it's, It's taken a while to really perfect how we wanted to do this, and we're very, very happy to have this launch today. I mean... This is just the culmination of so much work from us, from everyone trying to get involved. It's we, we've grown GSPN so much from just, you know, Ty, you, you spitballing ideas to me about, hey, what if we partnered with Adam and Jordan to now? Welcome we to the just, DMs. Now we just have so many. We, we've got Brewers. We've got Packers. We've got more. We've got a big network to be able to support all Wisconsin sports. And we're we're so happy to be able to announce this next step. All pro Wisconsin sports that the, the Badger and Golden Eagle fans and some Panther are still like, damn, I thought that was going to be the announcement. Sorry, maybe someday. It's just it's not, uh, not our space right now. But yeah, we're we're super excited. And I will say, I don't think we would have done this were it not for the amount of people we interacted with, whether it was at our meetup um, that we held in, in person or just you know digitally through the years who were like, we would love if you had a premium offering, we would love to you know, be able to get involved on that level and, and further support, which we really appreciate. And to be clear, um, Eurostep isn't going anywhere. Win and Six, Cruising, Talk of the Tundra, all still going to be available on their current feeds, on their current cadences. Nothing about that will change. And totally understand if there's people out there who oh, love GSPN, you know, not in a position right now to do a premium, that's fine. Seriously, totally you appreciate don't have people to. who listen. Listen, send the pod to your friends every day until they start listening. That's that's fine too. That's totally acceptable and we appreciate you just as much. But if you would like to check out GSPN Premium, which we, again, is going up today and going forward. So this is, it's, it's a pretty cool setup. We're partnered with Substack on this, but it's not, I would say, a, a, a traditional Substack that you might think of. So gspn.info starting today will take you to the new GSPN, I guess, main hub, which will have our podcast and our written content, and it will be home to GSPN Premium. So what you get if you sign up for GSPN Premium, you get one bonus podcast per week total through GSPN. So these are going to be collaboration episodes with some combo of the six of us talking general Wisconsin sports. Could be timely and topical, could be more of a... Just a fun episode going through maybe hypotheticals, maybe historical drafts, all this kind of stuff. But it'll be encompassing of all of the pods, all of the sports. Again, Wisconsin Pro Sports, so Bucks, Brewers, Packers. uh, You'll get that. So that that episode is just for GSPN Premium subscribers. You also get access to all of these sports pods on a commercial-free feed. So what this means is the commercials that you hear playing on the show, not the ones that we do live on the show, because those are baked in there, but the other ones will not be on that feed. So you can get a mostly ad-free experience outside of, of course, our dear friends at Prize Picks, who we cherish. Please don't leave us Prize Picks. Um, so you'll get that as well, plus exclusive written content. A lot of the articles that uh, we've done, especially Jordan Trusky, who's been really dipping the pen quite often, will be mostly for premium subscribers only. And... I'm really excited about the premium video content we've got coming, including Rohan, the return of GSPN Jeopardy. Uh, you know, I don't want to give too much away. It was us and it was Jordan Tresky with Numak as the host for this one, two-parter that's going to drop throughout this week. Jordan Tresky's good at Jeopardy. <sighs> Jordan Tresky's real good at Jeopardy. He is, he is very good at Jeopardy. I mean, I will say Numak did a great job compared to when I did it all those years ago. Ah, 
it is it is a fun it is a fun watch. It is very he very. He could have picked more than I knew. And that would be my my <laughs> feedback for him. But he he did. It, it was is a, an it entertaining was a, watch, nonetheless. Yeah, uh, very well produced. Numak is a, a wizard at the production, so that that part of it was really cool. Absolutely. And yeah, we're just, we want to emphasize, we're not trying to scale anything back. We are not scaling anything back. Anything that you currently have access to in terms of watching on YouTube, uh, listening to our podcasts, like that's all going to stay there. All of that is going to re- remain exactly the same. You are not going to be missing out on anything you currently have access to podcast wise by not subscribing to yep. our premium content. However, we are going to be scaling up our offerings. We're going to be offering more things for you guys to enjoy. And that's what comes with the premium subscription at $8 per month. I was going to say, yeah, the price point is 8 bucks a month or uh, 85 I believe, for the, the year. So a little bit of a discount there if you do the whole year. There's also a founding members option that is a little bit more at $100 a year. And the only bonus, I, I guess, there is just like, it's you know if you want to support more that is an option that that was available to us that we decided to try out so all the founding members will get um, their name or username shared in podcast descriptions as well as on a page on the new gspn.info hub so again that's that's totally up there if you'd want it you get all the the other things as well through just the general gspn premium Uh, but those are the two options and again to check all of this out and if you'd like to subscribe uh, you can go to gspn.info if you have questions feel free to ask us Uh, the discord is still there as normal so i'm sure there'll be a lot of chatter and q a about it in the discord today so if you haven't joined that uh, you can do do so as well but yeah, we're really excited to, to get this launched. Uh, we've been excited for a while. We think even more so than you know the clear uh, cash grab so we can afford Rohan as he continues to, to go viral across different social medias. I think the premium content is going to be, at least based on the ones w- that we've got ready to go and, and the launch so far, maybe a little more unfiltered, maybe a little more fire from the hip. I mean, there were some... There were some moments in Jeopardy that I was aghast. I mean, no one said sorry, Ty, because it's not the main the main pod feed. Yeah, that's that's that's. I will say that was mostly me. So, <laughs> spicy Rohan. We shall see. And I also want to say that this is going to be something that grows alongside. Yes, yeah. this is going to be something where this is not a finished product. We want to grow this with you. We want to take this journey with you, and we couldn't be more excited to start that with all of you today. Yeah. So again, check it out. Uh, new GSPN dot info. Hopefully, it's same link. Same, same link. Same link. Same Hopefully, link we've uh, always been talking about. So if you go back and listen, like let's say someone joins, they'll they'll go back and it's like, yeah, it's always been GSPN dot info. It's always it's always had something nice off the tongue. It it does sound good. We thought about changing it, and internally we were like, wait a minute, GSPN dot info is great. We can't change it, so we're not. It's still GSPN dot info. As long as I don't mess up the domain redirect. Well, hopefully it's gspn.info. Uh, boy, info on that to come. But anyway, so that's that's GSPN Premium. We're super excited. Uh, let us know if you have any questions. And again, really appreciate everyone who listens to, to the show or any of the GSPN pods. And certainly we'll, we'll also appreciate anyone who uh, who does decide to subscribe to the GSPN Premium. I'm again, expecting you don't have to. Four, I'm <laughs> expecting four people to do so. Oh, I was expecting so any, zero. <laughs> any more than that. And we're, we're doing, well, come on. We have families. That's true. Get twenty five percent of uh, of our very close relatives, and that's that's a good four. <laughs> anyway. you're very, you're very, yes, that is that is true. Um, so that's that, uh, and we'll we'll be chatting about it a bit again. It's not gonna we're not gonna do five minutes at the top of every episode on GSPN Premium, but given it's the launch day, uh, we're very excited. But anyway, we are here today to specifically talk about the twenty twenty four NBA playoffs as Rohan and I continue to watch. Some pretty good games, some less good games. The Eastern Conference Finals disgust me, but we're going to learn. What, what did we learn from this playoffs and how does it apply to the box? So I think we've a little bit touched on this in previous episodes. Frankly, we weren't ready to talk about the draft yet, so we're, we're not going to do that this week. We'll get into that as we get closer to it. But with the playoffs going on, and that's the big topic of convo in the NBA right now, right? Is outside of Bronny James is, you know, what, what are these teams doing well? And this happens every year and teams try to adjust, right? What's working what do we need to do? So, Rohan, throw it to you first. What do the Bucks need to do based on what we're learning from the 2024 NBA playoffs? I mean, you can't watch the remaining teams in this postseason and not think that just rangy defense is the way you need to build a team. I mean, even if you look at a team uh, who is the weakest defensively remaining left in the playoffs in the Indiana Pacers, which, by the way, can we just take a second? 
and say, what is that? What, what world are we living in? I'm expecting Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Derek White to get like arrested for forgery or something with the way this Pacers playoff run is gone. I like, mean, it's every and, round. And I guess the same for the Boston too. So maybe this series is going to come down to like the – uh, Andrew Nemhard, stoppable force meets the movable object. It's like, gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a Ben Shepard, James Johnson pick and roll contained by Luke Cornett and like Mimi Keda. Like that's gonna be all that's left for these. It's gonna be a two on two. I would watch the hell out of that. <laughs> I would not. <laughs> I absolutely would not. I'd rather, I'd much rather watch the WNBA, which is it's starting. Like, that's going I got on to, too. Yeah, yeah, it's gotten its season up and running, so I'm much more excited to watch that than Ben Shepard, James Johnson pick and roll. The the fever being in the Spurs situation is a little tough, though. A lot of fever games on TV. Not yeah. a lot of fever. Good moments. No, it's almost like a bad team gets the number one overall pick. Yeah. Yeah. Who would have thought? What a crazy yeah. concept. Uh, but yeah, the Pacers being in the conference finals is just great. It breaks my heart. Truly, it does. Uh, not only as someone who really uh, is intensely watching the Bucks, but likes basketball in general. Uh, it just it breaks my heart. But the thing is, like, that's happens. what happens. It 21 happens. Hawks. It's the same deal. It happens. Like when you go up against a team without Giannis, who has Dame on one leg, Chris on zero good ankles. Um, and then, like, a, a Knicks team without Julius Randle, who, OG and an, What happened? OG in Game 7. Like, I cannot believe they let him play. Yeah, they shouldn't have. That's, so, basically, like, the guys who missed time against the Knicks or against the Pacers team would win the finals Yeah, in any year. Dame. I mean, Brunson left a game. Even if you don't want to count Brunson, it would be, what, Dame, OG. I mean, you have Bojan Bogdanovic, Giannis. You have Mitchell Robinson. Julius um, Randle. Julius Randle, of course. Uh, you'll be able to add Porzingis in game one. I don't think he's going to be ready to play by the start of that series. He's so, uh, slated to miss the first two. Yeah, at least. I'm sure at least. So that, Solius, man, not, not something you want to play with. Sneakily, like, no one talks about Boston because, I mean, they also, like, the injured Heat and then, uh, who'd they play? Oh, the Cavs. Yeah. We're, we're, we're also down, like, three players by the end of that series. It's like a big deal if he's not right by the finals. That's a huge deal if he's not good to go by the finals. We'll see. But anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know how many lessons we're going to learn. I, I guess you, do you have to get young just to stay healthy? I mean, I mean this, this came – I, I started this uh, conversation talking about defense and just yeah. rangy defense. And you even think about the weakest team remaining. That's how I got onto this. Weakest team remaining yeah. defensively is the Indiana Pacers. And yet one of the hallmarks of them this postseason – has been on the defensive end. I mean, they have a lot of press defense. They play the most press out of any team uh, this postseason and obviously remaining left in the postseason. And it's a team that, you know, is still struggling defensively. They had the fourth fourth worst defensive rating in the entire postseason, but yet they're still able to make plays. They're still able to impact the game on the defensive end of the court. So it's difficult if you're the Bucs to take go uh, into next season thinking, yeah, you know what? Offense is going to win us this game. Offense is going to win us the title next year. It's not. It, it, it's really not. It, everyone's making their marks on the defensive end. Like the Timberwolves have just absolutely stymied the one of the best offenses in NBA history. And like the... The Dallas Mavericks, they were able to contain an offense that was given a little cold, a little yeah. cold uh, outside of uh, our friend. I say our friend, Shea Gilders Alexander. I like our to buddy. consider. Yeah, our buddy Shea. I don't <laughs> that know where that came from. from. Uh, like, friend what of the pod, pod Shea Gilders. So like, what a pod needs. <laughs> no. Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, everyone's able to make an impact on the defensive end of the court, and that's why they're where they are in the postseason thus far, in the conference finals. So if you're the Bucks, I don't know how you can go away from this postseason thinking, yeah, we can solely re- rely on the offense of them. Yeah, and I'm glad you said rangy defenders. One of my takeaways from watching this playoffs, like, are good defenders overrated? This is good. It sounds like my dumbest take ever. But seriously, are good are defenders... Are good defenders overrated when trying to have a good defense? Are, are defensive, like, maestros overrated? Because I was watching the playoffs and I saw PJ Washington have more of a defensive impact on games than Lou Dort or Drew Holiday. 
there's team context there. Certainly for Drew, Drew I, I feel bad for Drew that he's just like he's just there. I yeah, I, I, it he's sucks. in the Ben Shepherd. It sucks. Role. Like I, I mean, good. He send got him a bag. back. Send him he back. Got a bag, but like they, they just don't care. They're just like, oh yeah, we have we have Drew too. He's gonna guard the third best guy and take some corner threes, and that's it. it's like, damn, poor Drew. Not I'm thinking this is not a shot at Drew. There's people who every time I mention his name, go oh, Bucks fan hate Drew now. I don't. It's just you watch him and it's I'm just saying like, bring him back to the Bucks. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just like, oh, but I still just, want it. Yeah, me too. Um, anyway, but it's like PJ Washington, Derek Jones Jr. Some of these players who are not really known. Kyrie Irving has had a great defensive postseason. Like. If you're athletic and a little long for your position, Kyrie's not long, but as a as a true one, he's not not small. What is he like six three, six four with decent long arms? Like these guys have made a huge impact because in the playoffs you're allowed to be a little more physical, and even if you're not getting steals necessarily, just like being big and in the way has been huge. And obviously, the Wolves they do have great defenders like uh, Jared Vanderbilt and Anthony Edwards are, are very good defenders who Jane also fit that bill. But what I, I always <laughs> What's up with you and I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why. Thank you, Jaden McDaniels. Um, but like even like Nikhil Alexander Walker, who I think coming in the year, like the book is like he's a, a good defender. Like I don't know if he am I wrong? Was he seen as like a great defender when he's on there? I wouldn't even say a great defender. He's he's always been like a defense first guy compared to his offense, but he was never considered to be at the level of like a wing stopper. And I, and I wonder how much of it too is just like the rest of the defensive context as well. But some of these guys who are not like PJ Washington. I didn't think could defend at all. And apparently Nico Harrison, the Mavs GM, like remembers from his Nike days, like pre-college, they used clamping up best players on the other teams. Like that's cute. Um, all of these guys in the NBA were able to do that in high school because they were just much better. But anyway, I mean, it worked out. Clearly it worked out. And it's almost like, does it not matter if you have a one great defender, if you have five rangy switchable defenders total, or maybe just one next to them that helps everyone out, like the Wolves with Gobert, the Mavs have who's their best defender? I mean, that's a good question. Derek Jones Jr. Derek Again, Lively. Like, he's good. Derek Lively's a rookie. Derek Jones Jr. is like, yeah, he's a good. He's long. He's more of a long guy than I think. Like, uh, no one was like, yeah, all defensive guy. He was a vet man coming into the season. Uh, it's it's really been interesting to me to watch. Like, you know, I I wouldn't say I watched and I was like, wow, Lou Dort really impacted this game a ton. He's a great defender. Like, because you could just get switches so easily in the postseason. I, I don't know, but it's been. I that's think, I, my I, think I understand what you mean. It's you're, yeah. you're trying to say like, just having one great all world defender surrounded by like four okay to minus defensive players doesn't make you like it doesn't no. it doesn't make anything good. You'd rather have like four pretty good defenders or five pretty good defenders out there. Also, I mean, this is and we'll we'll have a separate conversation with the bigs themselves. But just bigger guys. I mean, that this whole playoffs. I mean, just it was look like, at the, like look, look at the Timberwolves. They'll play three bigs at once. Well, no, no. I, I mean, just on the perimeter too. So I'm I, well, yeah, I'm but I'm saying you can survive after. with just oh, bigger sure. guys. But like, I, I would look at Nemhard and how he just he got cooked by Dame. He got cooked by Brunson. Neesmith is not like was not supposed to be as good at guarding guards as Nemhard, and he's just been better. Because the size and the added playoff physicality is just really difficult to work against. Like, I, I, I think, a ne- obviously, Neesmith's had the book coming in as a defender. But you look at it positionally and go, yeah, Nemhard can guard guards better. Hasn't been the case. Like, just being big and long and physical itself is a huge deal. And not to take away from these guys that we're talking about as individual defenders, certainly not Neesmith. But, like, again, a P.J. Washington is just like, yeah, I can... I can guard Shea Gildas Alexander. Why not? I'm bigger than him. If I stay in front of him, it'll be tough for him. And it's kind of worked. Big and fast. Big and fast. That's all you need. One of my takeaways is like get Malik Beasley out of here, which has already been a takeaway. But like throw in somebody who's like 6'7 in that spot. Like I think they should be huge around Dame. Like on the wing, not four bigs, but on the wing around Dame. Because it just makes – the Mavs are defending at an insane level with Luka who doesn't even get down the court to defend half the time because he's still whining about the last possession. And yet, they're did you see, huge. Do you see Dirk yell at him and then he yeah, stopped I did. it? That's amazing. I love I love that for Dirk. Like, hey, come on, dude. Play, play the whole game. But And then they have Luka and Kyrie, and Kyrie has stepped it up, which we've seen Dame, I think, get to maybe close to that level sometimes defensively. So that tells me if you put another plus defender out there with those guys, 
I think they can be really good defensively because they're just big. I mean, we saw it with Chris. Chris held up in the playoffs because you try to go through him, and it's just like, oh, he's at, he's big, and he's, he's got long arms. Makes it tough. I think the Bucks are real close to being a very good playoff defense if they make that swap. No, for sure. They, they really are. I mean, just that, that spot, that two-guard spot was really killing them. Malik Beasley, like, why do you think he lost his job going into the to postseason? Pat, 35-year-old Pat Bev. Just because, yeah. A dodgeball player. Just because you needed some semblance of defense out there. And you just like you have Dame. Obviously, that's going to be the weakest link in most situations. It wasn't this year. Yeah, (laughs) the problem was it wasn't, but it has to be going forward. Exactly. That's what it needs to be. It has to be Dame. And that's not even an indictment on Dame. Like you mentioned, he had probably one of his strongest defensive seasons in a decade this season. He was locked in. He was not the problem, realistically. It was the people around him, and that's what you got to surround him with: is big, fast guys. Like if obviously, if 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 it comes to it, there's going to be Giannis, there's going to be Chris. Who knows what happens with Brooke? Who knows what happens with the two guard spot? But one thing is ninety nine percent certain is that you're going to have Dame, Chris, and Giannis in your starting lineup next year. So that's already two guys in in Giannis and Chris. One who's an all world defender, like literally one defensive player of the year in Giannis. Chris, we just talked about. You mentioned he still can like make things difficult come postseason time. And if he wants to take it easy in the regular season, be my guest uh, on the defensive end, Chris, because we know you'll do it when you need to. And it's what you do with those other two spots. If it is Brook Lopez for this for. Let's pretend that it is Brooke Lopez. You've got one spot left. It needs to just be someone who's big and fast. I don't even need, I don't even necessarily think they need to be the strongest guy. So here, that's why I will always lean like AJ Green or a Andre Jackson Jr. into that spot because they're young, they're big, and they're fast. Yeah. I, I just don't know if AJ Green is quite big and fast enough. I, I still like him as a bug going. I mean, just for that Ajax. spot. He doesn't play bigger than Ajax. Okay, fair. Um, just because of the athleticism and, and I think the wingspan as well. Uh, so, But anyway, yeah, I think that's probably been my biggest is you watch these games. Just like – also, like I think we have to do a better job, the collective we, not just you and I, but certainly me, on traits scouting more, especially as we look at other pro players. And that to me, like I tweeted the other day watching the Mavs of P.J. Washington is a great example of why we cannot let being drafted by the Charlotte Hornets ruin a player uh, as in terms of like what they can do. And it's tough because clearly it's like just a way different level of defensive effort. And I think you can hold that against him to a certain point. I mean, I thought he looked like a bad defender in Charlotte and now he looks like a very good defender. I don't think the shift should or usually is that. Hard, but I do think maybe do we look around at the league and dismiss guys who are six, seven, athletic and can kind of shoot as just like, oh, he's on a bad team, he doesn't defend this, that. When we know we've seen it so many times on I mean, look at Dame. I mean, not not that kind of player, but totally look different defensively. This I mean plus part of his responsibilities too, but there's a clear effort difference when you win in 15 games versus 50. And I think going forward, when we're looking at like who could that next flyer be for the Bucks, who could that next swing be, to not just dismiss guys because they played on bad teams, because clearly that, p- people would have said that, right? PJ Washington not a winning player. He's a winning player now. He's on a good team. So I think that's continuing to fight that and do a better job is one that I, for myself, have really taken away from watching the Western Conference playoffs. Yeah, you don't want to just write guys off. We were talking a little bit before we started recording about how everyone in this league is just so skilled. Like yeah. we, we were making the, the joke about Rondé Hollis Jefferson getting Kobe chance in, yeah. in FIBA, but that just speaks to what you're trying to say. Like you can't write guys off. You can't really say, oh, this guy's not a winning player. You can't say, oh, this guy doesn't really, he, he doesn't have it because the skill level of the league is so, so, so high where it's just, it's all context dependent, right? Like the league is not at a point of thinking about expansion and they would not be at that point if there wasn't an extremely high floor of a skill level in the NBA in general. Like, you have to have so many good players to be able to add new teams. 
And the NBA is at that point. That's why every game in the regular season is not just a cakewalk anymore like it used to be. Because every team has good players. Every single team in the NBA has like a number one option who's like, yeah, that's a good guy. Every single team. You cannot pretend that there's just no talent on some of these teams. It's all context dependent. It's all about who's what are the players around you? What is the what is the culture of the team? Is this team actually trying to win? And I I think the PJ Washington example is a great example because yeah, the Charlotte Hornets were not trying to win basketball games. They were not in a good environment. They were actively just bringing in as many criminals as possible. It's just what they were doing. Like so, it is. Let's hope that changed. <laughs> That's <laughs> new front office. Well, imagine if they double down. Welcome to the Charlotte Hornets, Mikey Williams, uh, Miles Bridges, Max. Oh, first my thing they do. I think there would be uh, literally riots. I don't know if there's enough Hornets fans, but I do think it would get very ugly. Yeah, um, if that were the case. But I, but I there, agree. Yeah, there's just a general high floor of players in the NBA where you even see guys who aren't in the NBA who get called up and just say, yeah, these guys can play. There's just not enough roster spots. Yeah, I mean, there's just a level of play in the G League and like players who were pretty useful in the NBA like two years ago can be in the G League now. And those players used to really stand out and they really don't anymore. It's just a very, very high level of play in both leagues. Another high level of play is whenever you play on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 5 million members, all you have to do is pick more or less on two or more player stats, and you get a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Playoff basketball rolls on, and the stars are even bigger on prize picks. You get a bonus if you include a star player up to a 10% payout boost in your lineup if you are able to win with them. And as we mentioned earlier, the WNBA season is in motion as well. So whether it's Caitlin Clark, who had an ankle sprain yesterday but did get back and play through it, thankfully, or the other stars in the WNBA across the board. I'll tell you, I watched the Liberty game. Sabrina Ionescu, Brianna Stewart. That's a good – I know they're in the finals for a reason. That That's a good team. I'm trying to, I'm trying to go to Liberty awarded. Sky next month. That would, be a, that would be a very fun one to go to as well. Any Aces game, they are loaded. Kate Martin seems like a real player. Anyway, we'll do our WNBA content later, maybe on GSPN Premium. But for now – our friends at Prize Picks. They also offer injury insurance. Of course, we will talk and, and have talked about injuries this postseason on Prize Picks. Your lineup stay in play even if one of your playoffs gets injured. If they exit the game in the first half and do not return in the second, Prize Picks has your back. That will not count as a loss. This week on Prize Picks, gotta I think you gotta roll with Anthony Edwards, who's been real good on the, the more than I I knew game seven would be low scoring. I still did the more than, but that's okay. That's okay. Another four to seven games of Ant, at least, as they take on the Mavericks. Speaking of, Luka Doncic, always a, a pretty safe pick. And then on the Pacers side of things, kind of like Miles Turner. What do you think? Miles Turner more than? Yeah, especially know. with no Porzingis to start. Yeah, that's what, you know, Horford's good, but not not the tallest. So I think I think Turner could be important. They got we'll to test him, man. I just, I, they got to. Uh, that's, let's let's keep that off the prize picks. Read, download the app today. Use code Eurostep for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That is promo code Eurostep on the prize picks app for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy at prize picks. I was gonna say something, but I won't. Another one of my, I, I guess the. What opposite. did you think I was talking about? I meant they got to test Al Horford's no, defense. No, I know, I know. Oh, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's just no negativity on the on the read. That's all. That's all I meant. You know who I was thinking of who's not in the playoffs, but one of our old friends, podcast guest, Javon Carter. Oh. And just like the the opposite of the big is good thing. Like he just really, I know he didn't get much opportunity, just didn't look impactful against Boston. And I just think the, the league is getting bigger. And I do think that's true. I, I think you look at the teams who are winning right now. They're all pretty big. I mean, Boston's without Porzingis, but when he plays, they're, I mean, they're pretty big too. Porzingis and Horford and a lot of bigger wings. I believe Indiana. they're one of the biggest starting fives in the NBA. Uh, yeah, they don't, have, they don't have anyone tiny. Pritchard's Derek only, White's their, small their smallest guy in the starting five. 6'4". Yeah. Drew is 6'4", 6'5", yeah. Um, and then the Pacers, Siakam is not a small player, and, and obviously Turner is a true big. Minnesota's huge, as we talked about. And then the Mavericks... 
a little smaller maybe, but Lively and Gafford, two, two true bigs who play the whole game, and they have some some size around them with P.J. Washington. They, athleticism, I think, can make up for some of it. But the teams are big. And again, the Mavs are a team that doesn't get small. Uh, Luka's a big guy. Kyrie is not a tiny guy, and he's really the only small guy they play in a lot of these games, sometimes Jaden Hardy. I think like a player like Marcus Smart, who we've been excited about, don't think I'm interested anymore. Watching these playoffs, he's 6'3". And like, what are we talking about? Like, and also injuries, which I think we'll, we'll get to as well. I would rather have a 6'6 athlete who seems like they are going to be able to available for more of the games than someone like Smart, who has this reputation as a great defender. I mean, do you really feel comfortable at this point in his career putting Marcus Smart on the elite NBA wings out there who are going to be four inches? I know he's longer, but are going to be four inches taller than him and, and maybe even bigger than that. I don't know, man. I feel like you look at these playoffs again. Derek Jones Jr. and P.J. Washington look as good on defense as anyone because they're just big, strong, and athletic. I mean, I still wouldn't hate Marcus Smart. I mean, we're only two years from him removed starting on a final scene. Yeah. And then... And then, yeah. Steph Curry didn't seem to have a big problem that series. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, Steph Curry, you're not going to take away everything, but... Uh, the, it's the asset allocation. Again, a Dylan Brooks, I'm so into. Bigger. Bigger, younger, more spry, more physical. And Marcus Smart's a physical player. I'm not saying he's bad. But I'm, I'm saying for this Bucks team, next to Dame, I just think I want someone bigger than 6'3 at this point. That's then, You know what? I think I'm in agreement with you. After watching these playoffs, like, yeah, how can that not be a big takeaway from you? Like, these guys are big guys. Just I keep coming back to the Timberwolves, man. And I know you can't replicate the Timberwolves. I know no. that. I mean, Tim I mean, Connolly will try. In a position to. The Bucks are probably one of the closest teams to it. They just don't have the um, McDaniels. I had to really – I wanted to say Vanderbilt again. They don't have the McDaniels. They could get one. There's, one, there's another one of those guys. Just get Jalen McDaniels. He's not as good that, as Jaden. <laughs> he's on my DJJ list. He is. He is. A, okay. Okay. Good to know. We'll talk about the DJJ list later. Yeah, we'll get there. But, yeah, I mean – you just got to be able to get bigger. And I'm just, I, I'm excited to, when we eventually talk about that list because, yeah, that's that's the type of player. That's the archetype you would want to see. And like I mentioned earlier, the the Bucks do have like guys who could theoretically fit that mold. Like we, one guy we haven't even mentioned, Marjan Bochamp. If yeah. the idealized version of him is the perfect version of that, right? For this Bucks team, and he's already under contract, he's already on the team. Just a long guy who's be, who can, is fast. Who's able to be like keep up with guys on the perimeter? Who's able to rise up down near the basket? Just being able to do stuff like that, like yeah. Unfortunately, we don't know if he's at that ability yet. However, he does have the tools. Yeah, and I think uh, uh, shout out our friends at Lockdown Bucks who had me on for a very nice two part episode all about the Young Bucks. So we talked quite a bit about Marjan, Andre Jackson, the whole crew, Justin Garcia, and I both in on CL. Both in, I talked about the Utah game. He immediately is like, that game was great. And we're talking about how they almost came back for 30 down. If you want to hear more about the Utah game, Ch- Ch- be sure to check them out. Uh, they, they do great work. Camille and Justin uh, had me on. It was very nice. But anyway, yeah, I think you know you have young guys. And I think you just take more swings at those players because you, you can't have too many. When you have Damian Lillard and Giannis and Chris, look, you've got your, sh- you've, I don't, you've got your shot creation. You do, right? You don't need that much more. Now you need play finishers. And that's the number one thing. And you look at these playoffs, and there are guys soaring in for putback dunks. They're cutting. They're out, getting out in transition. Think about how little the Bucks got out in transition over the whole se- season. And that's a shame with with Giannis. And I think they were again, one of the most in, efficient teams in transition, but they were one of the lowest frequency teams. They just need more juice out there to to make those to make to force the turnovers in the first place, and then to to be able to to capitalize on them as well. So, yeah, I think uh, you look at 6'3 guys. I mean, even Pat Bev is not, not very big. And I think if, if they had a bigger player in there who could defend, the Bucks would be better off. So I what think that's one of my Bev goals. got that leg lengthening surgery? I still think it just would well, – we've had this debate many times. I just think uh, – somehow. I, I just think it would impact your mobility. I just can't imagine it wouldn't. Isaiah Thomas, I'm telling you. Actually, no, I can't even say that anymore. He got an NBA deal. Yeah. I, I think a tall player should do it. Just like we'll get shorter, bowl, bowl, eight feet. Oh, <laughs> just get get extreme. Like, what's stopping Taco Fall from just being ten feet tall? 
uh, I think sci- I think like biology. <laughs> See science. Yeah, and literally, I, you can't live at a ten feet tall. No, not really. I think eight is probably the math, and still, it's it that big. You'd have to get shrunk again after your career. It's debilitating. Yeah. I wonder, could you do that? Could you just go like, like could could like Andre do the, the snip, giant, snap, snip, snap? Like I, Andre the Giant has his career, and then like. Boom. What, like these offensive linemen in the NFL, like they lose 100 pounds in like eight months and become normal people again. Imagine Andre the Giant just is like 6'4 one day. We could have we could have still had him. That's what we should be working on. Making people shorter. <laughs> just, just when it's necessary. When it's necessary, yeah. Anyway. But yeah, the Bucks need to be big. I, I brought up Javon, not to harp on that. But I just remembered like he's such a good defender for very specific players. When you get in the playoffs and you're switching and, and teams get bigger, he was not able to have that impact. And I think that – and that Javon is an extreme. He was like 6'1", right? Like I'm not saying at 6'3", 6'4", you can be an impactful playoff defender, but it does feel like we've seen the best defenders in his playoffs have been even bigger than that. And I think like the Pacers – I mean how important has Neesmith been to the Pacers in both of these series? I mean not to just – again, I'm not trying to glorify the Pacers, but we can't analyze how they've actually won outside of just saying the injuries – neesmith has been a big part of it. A little bit Siakam, but really Neesmith being able to defend and, and make it life. I wouldn't, even say that. I wouldn't even say that in the Buck series because Chris kind of filleted him. I would say yeah. like Well, Chris is bigger than him still. Exactly. But I'm saying like you're getting a defensive impact from everyone. Like TJ McConnell is a guy who's just putting on an absolute masterclass. I can't believe they're still making inbound passes around that guy without thinking. He stole one in game seven. I was like, Hardenstein, you need to know I was like what are you point. doing? And he, he looked he, at Brunson like, ended. what are you doing? Like, no, the it's your ended. fault, my guy. The game ended on that. He fouled, turnover, or no, tur- turned over, then fouled. It's really bad stuff. Yeah. And it's like, that guy's like five feet tall. Like, it. Yeah. That's, it's hard. It's like Alvarado. It's hard to see him. That's, that's the real advantage for those guys. But you either um, got to be really short or really tall. I will say, I think TJ is going to have a player. He's going to be a player who has a really hard time this series. Because as we talked about, there's just um, – outside of Pritchard, who we'll see how much he plays. Oh, yeah, that, that Peyton Pritchard-TJ McConnell battle is going to feed no one. <laughs> uh, we, uh, those guys are going to look great again because we've seen this. Those guys take that personally. Yeah. When, Gra- when Grace and Allen and Tyler Hero matched up, it was like, get out of the way. I'm saying uh, Drew yeah, Holiday yeah. is a guy who took the TJ McConnell matchup personally. Yeah, I was going at it from a different angle. Oh, That's I, TJ, I completely TJ understand. McConnell put buckets on him on MLK Day somehow. It's one of the worst days of my life. I, I was, like, that's got to be sad. illegal. You shouldn't be allowed to settling, do that. I was settling into the new house, and I'm just getting like radio updates, and it's just like 23 points on 8 for you shooting for TJ McConnell, and I just turned. I was like, no, nah, I can't that's do got, You can't do that on ML, MLK Day, man. He's built differently. Did you see the meme where someone said, this is this is the guy. It's a picture of T.J. McConnell like yelling. It's like when you're introduced to one of your girlfriend's boyfriends or girlfriend's friends' boyfriends, and they say he's great, and the guy absolutely sucks. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's harsh, but it's I do so see true. it. I do see it. Um, but yeah, other takeaways. Other takeaways. Let's see. I mean, what from this series? One thing that I actually think about a lot is about how this is not really something that I can like back up because it's more of like a feeling thing. Yeah. Being able to flip the switch looks like teams can do it. Yeah. Looks like, look at the Mavs, look at the Pacers. These are low seeded teams who everyone was like, okay, just wait for the playoffs. See what happens. Wait for the playoffs. They were able to do it. The Mavs though, they flipped it at the deadline. They did flip it at the deadline. they, They hit when PJ joined. So I don't know if it was just playoffs. The Pacers, more they really struggled after the deadline. And they kind of – I think they did hit their stride against the Bucs. And then they've gone from there. That's a good – You're yeah, able to build momentum note. in the postseason. Yes. Or right before it or soon before it. Yes. And that's one thing that we've talked about in regards to this Bucs team. Hopefully that won't be an issue next season because the Bucs will actually be good in the regular season. That's the hope. 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 Yeah. But let's say it's not. Let's say it's worst case scenario, knock on wood, it's not, that it's another injury-riddled season, but everyone's healthy come postseason. Are you able to build momentum in the postseason? Are you able to make sure that these players coalesce in ways that you didn't see in the regular season come playoff time? Yeah, you're actually able to see that happen. Like, we're seeing that come to fruition during this postseason. So it, it is possible. Yeah, I think the... 
I think that's a good one. And we almost saw it from the – I mean, the Bucks looked a lot better in the playoffs too. I mean, obviously they were down players and that, that limited their ceiling. But like defensively and execution-wise, I think they looked a lot more disciplined than they did in the regular season. I think it is important to not let, like I did, one really bad week ruin your life as a fan of a team. It was, to be fair, it was a tough week. <laughs> it was a very tough week. It was a very tough week. <laughs> Although – was that the same week that Giannis played all those minutes? So that week did end up kind of ruining the Bucs season. There, there's my other takeaway. Don't overtax your key players. And just try to – health is always a little random, but it was not totally random. Giannis and Dame played too much this past season. Certainly, maybe not overall game, amount of games, but if they have anything with any lower leg, sit them down. Seeding doesn't matter. The one seed in the West, gone. The two seed or three seed, the two seed in the West, also gone. Like if you're healthier, and and I think the Nuggets, like they were healthier than the Bucks, but Jamal Murray was clearly hampered. And I don't, again, it, I'm not saying it's because they played too hard or whatever, but that makes more of a difference than the home court. And I think we've seen that many times over the years. And I think I want to see a better plan for making sure those guys aren't overtaxed. And random injuries can always happen. But that week, Giannis played all those minutes against the Memphis Grizzlies and Toronto Raptors, and they didn't win anyway. I do think it caught up to him. And I, I would I would say be healthy and also try to get younger just because the young guys are just healthier. You look around the league. So They're able to just teams, spring up, yeah. This is the only time since the 50s or maybe ever that no MVPs are in the Final Four. All those old MVP players, like almost all of them were banged up at certain points or, you know, just like old injured guys. Anyway. I mean, who are, the, who are the current MVPs who are in the league? Giannis, Giannis didn't play and Embiid was totally hampered. Jokic was healthy, but they, Jamal was kind of hurt. Embiid couldn't play. Braun. Just old. KD. Just bad. Russ. Also bad. Harden. Yep. Am I missing anyone? Steph. Oh, yeah. Didn't even make the playoffs. Yeah. So it's kind of a fun season. Some, someone gets their first ring this year. I think so. I think that's it. I think there's only oh, like... Uh, Derek Rose on Memphis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, yeah. Again, didn't make the playoffs. But yeah, it's it's all these old older guys who get banged up. I mean, the only one who wasn't banged up in there was Jokic. Uh, Braun and Steph. Braun was dealing Bob, with a, like a little bit of an injury, wasn't he? He was questionable for a lot of games. He had that I mean, ankle like, injury. In the, in the playoffs, I think he was good to go, I thought. But I could be misremembered. It was so long ago. Yeah, and honestly. It's like over and then, yeah, ago. Steph, Steph didn't even make it, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, and Derrick Rose was hurt. so. <laughs> and, and I mean, that's MVP and na- really name only at this point. Yeah. I mean, same with like Russ. Yeah. But... I guess Harden wasn't injured, but again, it's so long. KD, KD was pretty healthy, I KD think. KD was He's pretty just healthy. A cyborg. He's just, the Suns were bad. And just he refused just to play the style of basketball you need to play now for some reason. Good hey, luck, Bud. Bud's going Bud's gonna to change him. He, I, I still think he took that job just because of the 2021 Eastern Conference semifinals. What do he you was mean? like, I, I saw the other side of a KD series. I, I wanted this guy oh, on my yeah. team. Like, yeah. we still almost lost. They had nobody left. We were still so close to losing. Let me have this guy. This guy plus my defense will be good. We'll I don't be really able to figure it out. Point. I thought she said Eastern Conference Finals, and I was like, no, what does that matter? No, semifinals. Yeah, semis. But no, I, I saw a fake trade for um, uh, DeAndre Hunter. And that's a guy who, too, I'd usually be like, nah. And he's kind of injury prone. That's The Bucks don't need more of those guys. But I was like, 6'8", athletic. Could he be the next PJ Washington? Like maybe, and that's like I, I, I mean, don't we've think seen flashes good. from DeAndre Hunter, like yeah, defensively, for sure. as if just a monster the, the against health, the Bucks. The health is is yeah. a big a big deal. I don't think they need a guy like that. But it's like I don't, he wouldn't be that good. But like Jalen McDaniels, could he actually be a real role player if he's on a good team? That is the kind of player who never looks good on a bad team. Like he's on the Raptors, no one can shoot. He doesn't stand out because they have a bunch of guys like that. Not not a good fit. And he's under contract. So they it's, it's that you got KD, but we got Jaden McDaniels. But it's like you got Jaden McDaniels, but we got Jalen McDaniels. We Jaylen got Jalen McDaniels. <laughs> Maybe that could age well too. <laughs> Who knows? Jaden McDaniels is very good. Uh, Jalen will also be cheaper than Jaden. Way, way, way cheaper. What is, uh, what is Jaden making? Like 135 or something? Yeah, Jalen's on a one-year, four mil- four and a half million dollar contract next year. So a little bit more obtainable, I think. 
Yeah, just a just a wee bit. Hey, Bruce Brown's uh, apparently ready to be traded, like prior okay. to the, prior to free agency. Good for him. We he's a guy we wanted at the deadline. Yeah, that was then. You still wouldn't want Bruce Brown? Not for the salary they'd have to give up. That is also true. I mean, like if it's Bobby and Pat, if they duck second apron next financial year, then maybe. Maybe. Anyway, enough. Not that, but again, smaller. Yeah. Yeah. True. Big guy. Bring me the big. I'm I'm with Adam now. Big guys. Also, another big guy take. Being able to stash a big defender off ball as the help has been really dynamic for Minnesota. Absolutely. Everyone was clowning, and by everyone, I mean Draymond Green, about having – it's just ridiculous at this point. Like, bro needs to retire I, and turn into a I full-time saw, content guy because that's no, what he likes. he shouldn't. Do. That's what he likes doing, I'm saying. But I don't want to hear him. No, I don't want to hear it either. I saw a clip of Ant talking so much trash to him from a game this season. It was so – I love Ant, dude. Uh, anyway, but yeah, Rudy on Gordon was their best with Cat on Jokic. Just like, again, a cat, not a good defender. But he's big. He's big and he's mobile enough to just like get in the way. Can he stop fouling has been the big question for him. The answer is no, by the way. Game seven, he's still committing silly-ass fouls and getting in foul trouble. But they made it work because they have Nas Reed off the bench, who, again, I don't think Nas Reed is an all-defensive level player, but he's a big athlete who could stay between. Do you want to get that Nas Reed tattoo like everyone's getting? No, I don't. I would like him on the box, but I would not like a tattoo of a Timberwolves sixth man of the year. Very much. But then Jokic is the help. It's like, okay, if you can just funnel him near Jokic, we can take everything away. And I think that – oh, yeah, sorry. And I think that's interesting to think of with Brook Lopez, but also just with Giannis. I mean, the Bucks have already seen that really work with Giannis as the help defender, but they've also had the big. But in a small lineup, like Giannis on a non-shooting threat or non-scoring threat four – is still, I think, one of the most devastating looks. So I think that something the Bucks have done in the past and will continue to do. Yeah, it's like you you want that stretch four who can also play the five, so you can let Giannis be a roamer. That's something yeah. the Bucks have been looking for ever since PJ Tucker. Like that. That's why so, that someone reminded me of Shemi Ojale the other day, and I was pissed off. Who? Yeah, number thirty so seven. seven. Number thirty-four. That's not. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. a good player. Shemi that's was thirty-four. Player. That's a big problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, number thirty-seven. Um, number thirty-four helped him more this playoffs than number thirty-seven did when he was on the court. That's very true. <laughs> I'll never forget. We're debating Shemi Ojale live, and then after we stopped recording, the box inside Shemi Ojale. I really uh, one of my worst takes ever. We've all been there, man. We've all been there. Um, but yeah, you just need to be able to unlock that. Like, who who is that? I I think I'm, I think about guys like Aaron Gordon, and it's like, yeah, you yeah. can't get Aaron Gordon. Like, can you get a guy like Nas Reed? No. Can you get a guy like I don't, I don't even know, like PJ Washington? No. But I don't anymore. even know if I don't even know if Gordon would be a great fit there. I'd take Aaron Gordon. I, I'm not saying I wouldn't take him, but I mean, like, the ideal Bucks stretch four has to actually stretch. That's true. I mean, I think Aaron Gordon, I mean, the teams would defend him like the Wolves did. Just like, all right, Giannis has two guys between him and the rim now because we don't care. And he can do some with the playmaking to make up for it. But a lot of the times in that series offensively, if he wasn't like eight for eight with eight assists, he was kind of hurting them. So it's it's a tighter line because the spacing, although the Jokic shooting really let him down this this season. And that was kind of a big a big deal as well. I actually think he probably relied on his jumper too much when it wasn't falling. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly something that actually did happen and come to fruition. Three-time MVP, though. I I, I got um, – the Bucks fans are still yelling at me. So I was like, why are we slandering Jokic for his 39-17-6 game when they lost when Michael Porter Jr. has five points on 12 shots? It was very it was very Bucks against the Celtics uh, 2022. It was reminiscent of that. And people have, oh, the, the Bucks had Chris out and Giannis was way better. Like, maybe. It's just – don't hate Jokic because people online that you don't like put Jokic over Giannis. I had to learn this with Ben. I hated Ben Simmons. I was like, what did Ben Simmons do to me? You know? You take Ben Simmons as that stretch for him? No. I don't want him on the team ever. But I'm just saying, like, I, I personally disliked him because Sixers fans online are like, he's better than Giannis. Ben Simmons didn't say that. It's not his fault. That's the same thing with Joker. Joker is like, 
I think, one of the most likable stars, and people hate him. Because... Even though he doesn't like Giannis? Who said that? He did. He would list his top European players and never put Giannis on there multiple times. I don't think he does. I think I, I don't care about that, to be honest. I don't know, man. It's not great. Anyway, I, I don't want to have this whole combo again. I just think if you're mad that the media unfairly held things against Giannis and did dumb narratives to take away rightfully won MVPs based on a playoff series where he wasn't even bad, I don't think the answer is to let's do it to the next guy because that's how it, it just goes on forever. Yeah, I think they're just mad that it didn't happen to Giannis. I know, I get it, I am too. But it's again, Nikola Jokic wasn't calling Matt Moore like, "Hey, don't give it to Giannis." He, was, he didn't even want to win this one. No, they gave it to him. That was he a good like, you and Matt. He was like, "This Ooh. is this is me holding my coffee cup." It's Jokic with the envy. Thanks. He didn't even want it. Yeah. Anyway. What else did we learn from the playoffs? The whole pod has just been be big and fast. Yeah, you know, and young and what healthy. Any, what anyone who's ever watched a grade school basketball game has learned. Yeah. I mean, like, that's, I mean, that's what we do. <laughs> are, are shooters overrated? No. But like well, special shooters. shooters. Yeah. Hmm. Who's been the best one this playoffs? Best specialist shooter this postseason. Like, Isaiah Joe? Yeah, it's going to be... It, I would say Isaiah Joe. Who kind of wasn't able to play big minutes because he was small and a liability. Yeah. I mean, uh, Duncan Robinson had a couple moments, but over... I mean, the deck was stacked against them. Max anyway, Struess was doing pretty good, though I wouldn't say he's like... He's more of like a combo for it. Yeah, he's, he, he has other offensive stuff. I mean, I think we all kind of knew this too because we've gone through it with... George Forbes. Niang, the minivan? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, Grayson was hurt. That would have been a big test case to see, like, had he improved his My game son. enough. I think the players who rely on the three-point line, Malik Beasley, for a lot of their buckets, are less effective. I just think the game tightens up more. We even saw, like, guys like A.J. Green need to be able to step in and make those shots. Yeah, and A.J. Green didn't have a great play. I mean, there were, like, Ben Shepard, who was horrible, is shooting, like, 70% for three of this playoffs. Like, I almost... I don't know what the takeaway is there besides just like just get lucky with who you have, but it has felt to me like some of these guys who are like the lauded shooters have not been able to make the same impact. No, I feel like that's true, and you see fewer and fewer of them on teams in general. Yeah. Like that's no not more really Anthony Moros. Anthony Moro, that's a name, dude. Was, was he even in, a specialist I, I, shooter? He was on my two K save one year. <laughs> I could shoot 70% with Azo. It's like, I don't know if Anthony Morrow was ever considered like a specialist shooter. Maybe I'm being too young here, but... Andre Ingram? Andre. (laughs) (laughs) He was. Bro, he was a specialist at everything. He was just... I'm not going to say anything bad about Andre Ingram. He seemed like a good guy. Yeah, seems like a great guy. I'm glad he got his opportunity. Yeah, the most but, make-a-wish but, player of all time. Oh, come on, dude. <laughs> you said you weren't going to. I know, but like... That was bad. Um, but I almost feel like defensive specialists have been a little more important. Maybe, but not really either. It's more of like an amalgamation. There's no specialists. Really. Yeah, you need, you need to be well-rounded. You need guys like John Horst, dribble, pass, shoot, you know? Like... And defend. You're saying, you're saying John Horst does those things? No, that's what John he always Horst says, is isn't a bucket? it? No, he does. Uh, dribble, pass, shoot, but also defend. Yeah. Like, you don't see any of these specialists anymore. Like, who's a specialist left in the NBA? Like, in this postseason? I'm probably Isaiah Joe is the closest. Gobert? Oh, yeah. But even he adds a lot of value. That nitty, that spinning nitty oh, that ended the game. Remind uh, someone. I, I saw someone tweeted it already, but it reminded me of that Clint Capella over the backboard shot. In, oh yeah. In the in the Eastern Conference Finals, Bucks Hawks, where it's just like, yeah. what is what is Nothing going on? Nothing you can do. Like you can't lose a game where someone does that. I also think though, like you look at like Gobert as an example. He's like the best in the world at that special. But he's also like adds value offensively. Like he's a not bit, solely yeah. a defensive specialist. Yeah. Like, he's a rim runner. He's an amazing screen setter. Like, yeah, not to just harp on athletic. screen assists. Yeah, but he's an amazing screen setter. He's a better roller than Cat, that's for sure. Oh, absolutely. Cat's a 
miles better offensive player, but yeah, he's a better oh, player. Yeah. Yeah, no question. But like I'm tr- I'm just trying to think of what specialists are remaining. Like go up and down rosters, like at least in the starting five, everyone can do a bit of everything. Yeah, I don't know if there's really I mean, yeah, again, like the the Pacers have some guys who you would maybe call that, but like Neesmith's had an okay offensive playoffs. Not been shooting it well, but still adding value. Yeah, Nemhard's been incredible, which I thought he was going to be more of a defensive-oriented player, but not so much. I mean, like, you you gravitate towards the Pacers and even them. Like, Boston, no, they don't have specialists. Like, no. That, the, their whole team is great because they have six guys who can do everything. The Mavs, I mean, you could say Kyrie, but even, like, he's not a specialist. He's just an overall offensive engine. And, again, he's been a good defender this playoffs. But, yeah, if you're that good at everything on offense, I wouldn't say specialist. And, yeah, not even Lively? a specialist. Lively is just kind of just a rim runner defensive guy, but but that's, I think that's for him, still multiple things. It's that's that's two things, and also I think you look at your big should either space the floor, Celtics Pacers, or be like athletic enough to be rim protectors and dynamic rollers. Yeah, which vertical is both space. teams in both teams in the West. Yeah, and you just you just see up and down these rosters, they don't really have specialists. No. So maybe that's like the biggest test case for Van, like, yeah. Vanda, uh, Daniels is maybe the... <laughs> I can't tell if you're doing this on purpose. It's not a bit. It's not a bit. I think the problem is people talk about the Lakers so much and they're vaguely similar players that I keep thinking Vando is like this excellent defender because I see a billion posts from like, oh, if they get Vando back, they can... I'm like, oh yeah, great defender, Jared Vanderbilt. It's McDaniels, the one I want. But McDaniels is kind of defensive specialist, but had some huge offensive games in the playoffs too. Oh, absolutely. Like you don't rely on him just to do this one thing. And that brings me back to like Malik Beasley. Like yeah. are you going to ever expect Malik Beasley to lock up on the defensive end and provide more value to you off defensively than offensively? No. Like are you going to ask – Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, like are you even going to be able to ask Malik Beasley to do anything else besides stand still as a three-pointer? No. Like he's just good at one thing, and even that one thing he wasn't good at. Or even what about the other end? I mean, Pat Bev when he was only de- providing defense, like half the games when he didn't shoot well, the minutes got he, a little tough. Even and when even he, made the he impact. even he was able to make meaningful contributions on the offensive end of the postseason. Half the games, but I'm he still did game, it. But yeah, but I, I think it's hard to afford a player who only half the time will give you both. I think you need guys who are consistently useful on both ends. I'd say like, but I'd even, I'd take like what Pat Bed gives over guys like Malik Beasley. But it's not good to have that as a starter. Correct. That's my point. Correct. That's, yes. that, the issue is that as a starting five player, when in half the games, like, yeah, he might just do nothing offensively. No, that he is He gives very- you some good defense though. So I think you take a player like that on your team, but I think... You need a, a core unit of five who is consistently adding value on both ends. I don't think there's a player, a starter left in the playoffs, even with some of the injuries, that isn't able to contribute clearly on both ends of the ball. You go through all four teams, and they all do something both ways. I think that should be the Bucks' goal next season. I think that's very fair. I think it's – is it doable, though? It's either one or two positions, depending on how you feel about Brooke Lopez. Yeah. But are you like if you're John Horst, do you feel like are you do you feel confident in the Bucks' ability to do that? Yeah, because I think the, we've seen these players, these athletes that are succeeding now, have not been very expensive to obtain for a lot of these teams. Aaron Gordon won, yes, but he's like the supercharged version. Derrick Jones Jr. was a vet minimum. He's starting as like their premier perimeter, one of their two perimeter defenders. PJ Washington was that was two first. That was a little pricey, and that's worked out super well. But I do think you've seen these players be, be obtainable. And again, as, as you mentioned, they already have a guy or two. Can maybe do that on the roster with another year of development? Maybe. Is Aaron Gordon be... the Michael Jordan of Marjon Bochamps? Probably. If not, P.J. Washington is. Yeah. P.J. is coming for the throne. <laughs> I, I, don't, I usually is, hate... Is like... Carl Towns the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar of Nikola Mirotic's? <laughs> He might be. I think he is. I mean, that's pretty you much know, what I usually he is on that hate, team. I usually hate like NBA Twitter things, but that one's funny. <laughs> uh, that's that's been a good bit because it just you have to really it, you have to understand. It's, it's nuanced. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nuanced. I yeah, I usually don't like those things, but that one's funny to me. <laughs> yeah, I will say 
I'm seeing your side more. I'm not all the way there yet on Brook. The more we talk, because the size is good, but the the foot speed is a little like, concerning. I think still. we can give up a little bit of the size for more foot speed. Yeah, like he doesn't need least, to be at seven least one. at least need to have that mode. Yeah. If they bring back Lopez, I would like to see a center off the bench who can be a rim protector, just not as good as Brook probably, but a rim protector can go block shots and rotate and can go run the floor and dunk on the other end. Sounds like my probably, boy Duop Reef. You do love some Duop. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Sounds sure. like your guy Biz. Probably too small. Yeah, and old. Poor guy just sat there on OKC. Was he clear to play? I think so. He just didn't, yeah. Also, here's a takeaway. Probably my last one. Don't help division rivals get better. <laughs> For anyone confused, the OKC Thunder took a Dallas pick swap and gave them a future first that they used to go get PJ Washington, who then just sent them home. No, but they, they also they also traded up, the Thunder did, to go get Derek Lively with the Thunder. The Mavs did with the Thunder. Yes, right? yeah. Yeah, so like two of their five starters were just gift wrapped to them by the Thunder. It's crazy. Like, why are you helping this team who's going to compete with you? Maybe maybe OKC did not think they were going to be as good as they were this year. I will give them that. But still, you by should. the P.J. Washington trade. Yeah, exactly. By the trade deadline. Like, I can excuse the lively one a little bit. I mean, that's that's a draft. That's different. I mean, they could have the Mavs could have easily whiffed on that pick. Like, I, I won't hold that one. Against. Yeah, that's why I, that one I'm OK with. The the uh, the P.J. one is the ridiculous. Inexcusable. And then you just go get Gordon Hayward, who was horrible. Ooh, yeah. And he did, he had those Jay Crowder quotes after the game, like, I don't know what my role is here. And it's like, bro, you, did you watch yourself play? Zach Lowe said he thinks he might be out of the league. I listened to a low post. Now the Bucks are out, I'm back in. Really? It's Maybe fun hearing can. them be sassy about other teams. Maybe I'll be back in. Yeah. but um, Yeah, Gordon might be out of the league, though. Like that's. I've seen some Bucks fans, like, I'm worried they're going to sign him. I'm just like, why? I'm not. If the John Horst isn't an idiot, then I'm going <laughs> to sign Gordon Hayward. I mean, if they did sign him, I'd just, I'd just be Gallo again. I think he'd be better than Gallo. But Gallo actually, that's, I don't know. I don't know. Gallo was provided Gallo some Gallo was better this playoffs than, than Gordon Hayward was. Yeah. Shout out to Gallo, man. Both also a nicer players. guy. Great guy. Yeah. yeah. Education reform. Is that what was on the back of his? Yeah. I still remember the... <laughs> I was thinking about during the playoffs the, the Dante DiVincenzo. What was, what was that? Was it Dante in the bubble? Oh, what did oh the he had like a highlight of uh, equality and they tweeted it with the caption equality and it's who did he cross? Was I think it, it was Jalen Brown or something. No, because it had to be. Oh, was it regular season? Maybe it was. Yeah, it was regular season. Yeah, and. Oh man! It's just him crossing up Jalen Brown. It's Have you just... seen the clip? Have you seen the clip of the uh, the roommates pod with Jalen Brunson and Josh Hart, where they talked about how Dante defeated racism in Delaware <laughs> with Dante? <laughs> so funny. Josh, I, I I I usually would hate the Knicks, but that team is so likable to me. They're very likable. Josh Hart just holding out the daff, like, dude, congrats, bro, you beat racism. Dante's like, no, man, I'm not. I'm not dapping you up. <laughs> It's very good. Josh Hart and Larry Nance Jr. will forever remain in my heart. Yeah, you love some Larry Nance. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If you want a mobile big, man. Uh, we might be past that time. I don't know. How old is Larry Nance Jr.? 30s. Also, I've seen Bucks people who want to get Jonas Valanciunas. And that just feels like a no, new version of the same 31. problem with Brooke. Only 31. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Oh, I guess like Bobby's like 30, isn't he? Okay. You're not, you're not throwing out the right guy. If it's players, I want to keep around the bucks and you're using Bobby Portis. Bobby's 29. Yeah. That's crazy. He plays like he's 35. 0.3 alley-oops for each decade of life. He's, he turned 29 in February. He's like a fresh 29 too. That's crazy. A lot of, a lot of trade value. He's got that old man game. Can they just like can they can the Bucks capitalize on Nas Reed Mania and be like this guy's kind of Nas Reed? He was almost sixth man of the year. He was one of the men of the year. Yeah, <laughs> some 18th, number 18th, <laughs> ninth man of the year. Sorry, ninth. Yeah, he was like the eighth man of the year because he was third, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eighth man of the year. Eighth man of the year. You know, that's how that works. That's that's really important. Yeah, I'm telling you, Pelicans, you should get in on that. Yeah, I don't think Herb Jones. It sounds like the Pelicans love Herb Jones. Yeah, that'd be a not, guy. That'd be a perfect guy. Yeah, he's Herb, huge. I love it. Herb and Larry for Brooke. Oh. I'm gonna be so basic this year with all the offseason grades. Just like number one, is he big? Don't care. There is one small guy spot, the backup point guard. We talked about the Chris Dunn's and the uh, who's the guy? Oh, I'm Dennis Smith Jr. Dennis Smith Jr. I will allow one, and they can have Ty Ty as a third guard if they want to, or battling for second guard. Otherwise, big, 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 big. No Malik Beasley, no Javon Carter. Six five and above. Big boys only. Yeah. The... <laughs> That's my new rule. Yeah. Weaponize your size. I want Dame to look comically small when the Bucks are in group together. Oh yeah, that'll that'll be the good stuff. I want Dame to just look like a a, a nice little man. It's a wild way to put that. <laughs> what do you mean? I want him to look like a nice little man. What do you mean know. by that? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, he's a nice guy. Just like a, uh, I don't know. I don't want to use the word cute. Why not? That would have been better. I don't know. Than nice, than nice little man. That's like you're describing a guy at his first day of elementary school. Like, oh, look at this nice little man. Sometimes like, that is how I feel about Dave, but I don't know why. What something nice about kid? him. So yeah, something about him. The way he goes. He, I think he reposted on Instagram a fan cam of him from a post game presser. It's just like all these different angles with no. I thought I thought it was like something he said, so I clicked in to listen to it, and it's just like. Like some song that I hadn't heard, like a fan cam kind of song. Just all these angles of Dame talking. I'm like, that's adorable that you would share that. That's so precious. He shares people posting his music, all these pictures of him and his kids, him and Giannis. Like the way he said after the season, I don't run around out there with a pleasant demeanor. Who says that? He's just, ah, love him. I know he's much taller and older and more accomplished than me. I know, but from afar. He's not that much taller than you. He's my yes, he is. He's four inches taller than me. He's my nice little man. What are you talking about? I'm talking. You're like six one. That's true. He, canonically, he's two inches taller than me. Yeah, I was like, what are you talking? Two to about? three. Two to three inches taller than me. Dame's like six two. He plays at six four. Yeah. Does he? I think he's. I don't know. Now we have these stupid shoe heights and no shoe heights. Damian Lillard is listed at six two. Okay. Canonically, a little taller than me. Yeah. I'd say around your head. On TV, an NBA player who's 6'2 might as well be a garden gnome. That's what I want it to look like. You look like, uh, it's like, uh, what's that photo of him and Brooke where it's like uppies? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want that to be the whole starting lineup. <laughs> where it looks like Dave's asking for uppies with every single Yes, one. see, you get it. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, now I know why he's a nice little man. A nice little man. <laughs> Look at this handsome little guy. <laughs> I'm always so proud of him now. Now that I overcame my thing with him midseason, I'm just like, love you, Dan. Yeah. Keep it up, buddy. Apparently he's back in, at Lake Oswego with his kids. Yep. yep. I can't wait for the next song to drop. He's going to have a lot of time to record music, some yeah. cute little songs. Let us have a feature. You, you're really trying to get into rapping. I mean, From the Roan thing to this. Yeah. Maybe that's the next thing at the GSPN Premium. The, the Dame Dollar Pod with Rohan. <laughs> I mean, I'd do it. Well, yeah, I would hope. Yeah, that's the newest GSPN pod, everyone. Make Premium it happen. only? What? Premium only? No, we no. can make people that. People need that. Only. People need that. Yeah. No. The outtakes will be premium only. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Of Dame going, what, what, what did you call What did you guys call me? <laughs> It's just like, so would you describe yourself, Dave, as a, as a, as a, as a handsome little man? <laughs> nice little man. <laughs> nice little man. He's like, what? <laughs> oh, I hope that Why am I here? Clipped. I hope that doesn't get clipped. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think this is going to be, that's the end of our show. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be the end of us. But hopefully, we'd keep it going at GSPN Premium. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As always. Um, so, yeah, check out GSPN Premium at gspn.info. And you'll still find a bunch of our other content there as well. It's not just premium, but that will be the place we can go subscribe. Set it's up a hub for all podcast. things GSPN. Yeah, just as it always was, just much prettier now, which is yeah. nice. Yeah, gspn.info, same link as always. We hope you subscribe, but again, you don't have to. 
you'll find uh, extra bonus content. We're not scaling down, we're scaling up. It'll be a great journey that we cannot wait to start with you. But yeah, for for now, better subscribe here though. Yeah, you can still subscribe here on your your podcast platform of choice on YouTube. Yeah, it's free. You can do that as you've always been able to. So make sure you do that. Make sure you check out all of our stuff. And and that includes premium content now at gspn.info. All of our links, everything is there at gspn.info. But yeah, we appreciate you all. Thank you for uh, helping us grow. Happy third birthday to GSPN. It's been a pleasure uh, doing this and uh, we can't wait to see where we keep going to so thank you to everyone who's ever listened who has ever tweeted at us who's ever done anything to make us feel supported that's the reason we are where we are today so we truly truly appreciate that but yeah thank you for listening to this episode make sure you check out gspn.info pod random and we'll talk to you next time